Hi everyone and welcome. This is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, I want to talk about dogs today. When we talk about dogs, it can be uh, very sweet or very um, masculine. <laughs> you know, when men talk about uh, how beautiful and how strong their dogs are or that they want to get strong and beautiful dogs. I was personally never into uh, the usual man talk about uh, strong cars and strong bodies and strong bodies on women, uh, strong sports teams, strong dogs, you know, other men have other things that are strong. Anyway, <laughs> when we talk about dogs in the Islamic context, things are neither sweet nor beautiful. It, it's not good at all. Islam takes many or most of its characteristics from Muhammad's characteristics, which are, as we know by now, not very beautiful. Just like Jews, apostates, doubters, homosexuals and others, uh, dogs were also not very much liked by Muhammad. Uh, let's get into that. Before starting, I want to thank everyone for supporting me so far, especially those who support me on Patreon. I don't earn anything from this, I have no ads and my channel is not monetized and probably never will be, so your support on Patreon is pretty much the only thing that supports my work here. If you want to support my cause, you can do so on Patreon, the link is below in the description. Thank you very much. Okay, back to topic. If you live in a country where there is a large Muslim population like France, the UK, Germany, Sweden, Netherlands and so on, you might have witnessed or experienced with your own dog that many Muslims are either terrified, disgusted or just annoyed by dogs walking among them. You can even see them telling you that you, that you should keep your dog away, please. Some might beg you, some are uh, just hiding and others might even get aggressive with that attitude. That's not due to some Muslim gene or anything, it's completely related to Islam. Dogs are pretty much everywhere in the world, but there are by far fewer dogs in the Islamic world than in the West, which is not only due to climates. Muslims usually don't pet dogs, and they don't take dogs as pets. They like cats more. I liked cats too, until I had one myself. <laughs> uh, fun fact, Muhammad also hated dogs and liked cats. Surprise, surprise. Dogs are seen as impure in Islam, and it is even forbidden to have dogs at home. Keeping dogs is only permitted if it is for security, like for livestock or for your house, for example, if it is somewhere in the country. A hadith by Muhammad says that someone who keeps a dog will have his rewards from Allah decrease every day as long as the dog is there in the house. <laughs> so you see how ridiculous that is? Another hadith says that an angel does not enter a house in which there is a dog. And this is a widely held belief among Muslims. That's why they don't have dogs as pets and tell others not to have them as well. That could be a very nice trick to keep the angel of death away and to stay immortal, if it was true. On whether a dog is completely impure or not, uh, Sunni Islamic schools and branches have different views. According to the Maliki school, a dog is completely clean but should still not be kept in a, at home. According to the Shafi school, the entire body and the saliva is impure and should not be touched. Otherwise, you need to purify yourself with the Islamic washing. According to the Hanafi and Hanbali view, the dog itself is clean, but the saliva of a dog, the mouth and the nose area is seen as impure. It is ordered that if a dog uh, licks something or breathes very heavily on something so that it becomes wet, then it has to be uh, washed through uh, Islamic washing. Uh, that also goes for your own skin. You can't go and pray with that. Uh, the method this washing is done is also quite weird. It is recommended that whatever got any wetness of a dog must be washed seven times, including with soil. <laughs> So all of this is why Muslims take a huge walk around you if you uh, are walking with your dog outside in Paris. As you see, Islam is pretty paranoid when it comes to such beautiful animals like dogs. But like Nazism, Islam has some good sides as well. There is one hadith where a person fills their shoes with water and lets a dog drink it. And Muhammad said that the person who did that will go to paradise. 
As weird as it sounds, it has something good in it, but this is not enough to make up for all the bad things that Muhammad and Islam do also to dogs. There are specific hadith which report that Muhammad once ordered the killing of all dogs in the city of Medina, so that the Muslims gathered upon his order and killed all dogs in the city. There are Islamic speculations about why this happened, why Muhammad made such an order, especially uh, moderate Islamic speculations. Some say that uh, the dogs were rabid, some say that the dogs were way too aggressive or sick in any way, or they were uh, endangering livestock and things like that. But killing all dogs in the city was very much a very prophetic uh, way to deal with this situation. The role model of Muslims, the perfect messenger, the greatest messenger of the almighty, all-knowing Allah, sees a problem with dogs and then goes on and orders to kill them all. And the problem is pathetic. If you read the hadith, the reason for that is not rabies or aggressiveness or anything at all. I will read you the hadith. It is ridiculous. You can start shaking your head now. The Messenger of Allah was upset one morning, and Maimuna said to him, O Messenger of Allah, you look upset today. He said, Jibril, peace be upon him, had promised to meet me last night, but he did not come, and by Allah, he never failed to keep an appointment. The day passed, then he thought of a puppy that was beneath a table of ours. He ordered that it be taken out, and then he took some water in his hand and sprinkled it over the place where it had been. That evening, Jibril, peace be upon him, came and met him. The messenger of Allah said to him, You promised to meet me last night. He said, Yes, but we do not enter a house in which there is a dog or a picture. <laughs> the next day, the messenger of Allah commanded that dogs be killed. Do you see how f***ing ridiculous this is? So, not only did Muhammad have a weird bromance thing going on with the Islamic Gabriel, no, he also was upset about it so much that he killed all dogs in the city because his uh, Islamic Gabriel boyfriend didn't come to see him at night. You know, this, is, this sounds very crazy. Uh, when I read this hadith, I think that um, Muhammad was probably crazy. He was insane and he made up things in his own mind that he even believed himself. Maybe he really believed in what was going on, or he was just uh, evil and mad again. He blames a dog for his lunacy, and then goes on and finds the solution in killing all dogs. What a madness. Now, uh, Muslims today, especially moderate Muslims who want to discuss with non-Muslims, uh, argue very much about which dogs are supposed to be killed. If you look at the hadith, in that hadith, Muhammad actually ordered the killing of all dogs. But then other hadith came up that mentioned that rabbit dogs and aggressive dogs should be killed. And black dogs. After the incident of killing all dogs in town, Muhammad forbid killing all dogs. But he said this, Were dogs not a species of creature, I should command that they all be killed, but kill every pure black one. In another hadith, Muhammad explains that black dogs are the devil, and therefore they should be killed. To summarize this, Muhammad hated dogs, and Muhammad is the perfect role model that every Muslim is supposed to follow. According to Islam, he is uh, the most perfect human to walk the face of the earth. The general behavior of Muslims is very much derived from uh, the behavior, the sunnah, of the Prophet. That's why it's not very surprising that Islam hates dogs and that Muslims are so terrified of dogs. As for the cruelties against dogs, Muhammad ordered first uh, that all dogs in that specific incident should be killed. Uh, later, he forbid killing all dogs, and he ordered that uh, rabbit dogs should be killed, which is fair, that aggressive dogs should be killed, which is not really fair, but whatever, and that black dogs should be killed, because black dogs are evil. Uh, no, 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 black dogs are the devil. <laughs> What did this cute thing ever do to you? As you can see, not even dogs are safe from Islam. So please, keep your dogs safe and get a dog as a pet everywhere in the West. 
If you live in Europe, please get a dog, or please, if you have a dog, go out every day and take them for a walk whenever possible. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you for watching. If you like my content and if you like this video specifically, then please don't forget to subscribe and to share and to like. If you want to support me on Patreon, which is the only source where I get any support for the work that I'm doing, uh, you can do so. The link is below in the description. As said, my channel is not monetized and probably never will be, so I appreciate every kind of support that you are ready to give. For more updates, you can follow me on social media. I'm very active on Instagram, very active, and on Twitter. I will see you again on Friday with another video, and there will be so many more videos to come. It's endless, so stay here with me and enjoy it. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Stay away from Islam.